everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Inside this very large box is the latest resin 3D printer from the folks over at Anycubic. It's the Photon M3 Max. And in today's video, I'm gonna be getting this unboxed. We're gonna get some prints up and running and show off what this thing can do. All right, I'm gonna try and stand this on its side so we can get the printer out of this box. This is really interesting. This is the first time I've seen a printer come in just a standard uh, box like this. However, there is a metal or aluminum frame here that the printer's sitting inside of along with the styrofoam backing there. So this is explaining why it was, you know, just packed like this and not in some sort of a crate. Now that we got the metal frame off, let's take a look and see what's inside. We got a lots of foam packaging here. Oh, here's our first little box, some masks, some filters. Ooh, here's some piping, it looks like, for the auto-feeding resin mechanism. Metal spatula, we've got a plastic spatula, we've got a USB, more gloves, Allen wrenches here. It looks like all the typical stuff that you'd see with most resin 3D printers. And again, looks like we have another manual here. Here is the back panel, and we have a front panel for the acrylic displays. And it also came with a screen protector. That's fan fantastic to see that such a large machine by default is gonna come with something to protect that screen. You definitely don't want any resin spilling on the screen. Woo. Here's our vat. Oh, this looks very nice. Here are some components for the auto feeder for the resin. This looks like the piece that's gonna go and hold the actual bottle of resin. Holy moly, this is one heavy duty build plate. Oh my goodness. It's actually very thin up here. It's not like a really large top. It's uh, it's almost like a wing that you can pretty easily hold on to. There's handles on both sides as well. Holy cow, this looks really nice. Ooh, and here we go. All right, let's get this guy free here. Some heavy duty straps. While I'm getting everything put together here, I did want to mention that the power outlet here for the unit is on the back side of the machine along with the on off switch. The cable itself, there is a box that is going to go directly to the power supply there. And then there is your typical cord that's going to go from that box to your outlet. This is a really nice long cable as well. Thank you for that because uh, with these bigger machines, you might want to put them up on a different shelf and it might not necessarily be next to an outlet. So this is always handy to have. While I'm still setting up everything, I wanted to show you that this is a really beefy dual rail system. I'm really liking this solid aluminum or metal here holder that just protrudes out that you're gonna be able to bolt on to the build plate to get everything nice and level. And here in the back corner, you can see the auto resin feeder that I'm assuming is gonna click into place and then we'll get some resin hooked up in the back and it'll auto feed in as resin's used. And as I mentioned during the unboxing, it came with a screen protector, which is great. So there was an initial layer of protective film that I removed and now I can install the screen protector so that we can prevent any resin from curing directly on the screen. Now I still have a handful of little air bubbles from laying down the screen protector. In my experience, there's never really been any issues with that, so we'll see how this goes. And before we install the build plate, I am just gonna run a quick exposure test to make sure that the lighting unit is working properly. Also make sure to remove any of the protective film on the build plate before you print anything. And to level, we're gonna loosen the four bolts on the side of the build plate. And then once that's freely moving, we can install it onto the printer here and then tighten this bolt down and use this really nice large leveling paper that they included for the leveling process here. And all I've done is homed the build plate and we should be able to tighten everything back down. And the next thing we need to do is install the back cover by screwing in some of the bolts. And on the back of the printer, we're gonna install the holder that will actually just hold a bottle of resin for you while it's auto feeding into the vat. And how this will end up working is I'll have a bottle of resin back here that I can set this in and put the cap on and then run this wire through the opening in the back of the case and then connect it to the auto feeder here. Now, before I install the auto feeder, I do wanna try and just run a quick test print just to make sure that I have everything calibrated properly, everything's level before I go about 
making more of a mess than I need to. But one really interesting thing to note about the new VAT is the FEP sheet isn't completely translucent and it'll be interesting to see how this actually holds up when it comes to printing things. I'm assuming it's gonna be fine. Also, the VAT has two little plastic feet that'll help keep the FEP sheet off of any surface that you might sit it down on. It also makes aligning the VAT into the printer much easier. One hour and 32 minutes later, and my first test print is completed here using Denny's Wang's calibration print and Soraya Tech's calibration file. Prints are coming off nice and easy off of this build plate. I cleaned off the prints using the Wash and Cure Plus and they're looking really good and I'm excited to move on to something much, much bigger. I wanted to go ahead and hook up the auto feeder tubes. So I followed the instructions that came with the unit and attached the tubes to the appropriate ports on the machine. I also filled up the vat with as much resin that it would hold up to the max fill line, then lowered the build plate in all the way to the bottom just to make sure that it would not top over and any resin spill out before I install the auto feeder. So now I'm gonna do that with a new bottle of resin in the back. What's also nice about this is there's LED indicators on the auto fill mechanism there. So I've got a green light, meaning it's powered. There's also a red LED that's not displayed because it's sensing that there's resin in the vat. So that means it's a it's a good thing the needles are detecting resin and we can install the actual probes. So while our print's running, let's talk about some stats about the Anycubic Photon M3 Max. It is a 13.6 inch 7K monochrome screen and it's sporting a screen protector as well. It also has an impressive build volume of 298 by 164 by 300 millimeters tall. It has a laser etched build plate, which is pretty easy to level. The VAT's rocking that semi-opaque FEP sheet, which seems to be working just fine. The machine also has a 4.3 inch touchscreen display, which is similar to what you've seen over on the Anycubic Mono X. The front cover is also completely removable since typically you only see things like a barn door style or it has a hinge somewhere. And the printer only weighs 46 pounds, so it's pretty easy to lift up and move around. Oh, and most importantly, my favorite feature of the printer, which is the Anycubic Electronic Auto Resin Filler. And it's only gonna cost $1,099. That is a lot packed into this big resin 3D printer. All right, our prints are finished and now it's time to take a look at them. It almost took a full 13 hours for these to print at 0.05 millimeter layer height. And so far they're looking really good. I ended up cleaning them here on the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus station. And thankfully all the prints fit just fine in that oversized Wash and Cure station. Now, most importantly to me, I mean, aside from the prints themselves looking pretty dang amazing, is that the auto resin filler worked perfectly. I mean, it was really cool to see it auto refilling, I think in about every five minute increments there, and you can actually adjust how fast it's gonna trickle out the resin for you when it senses that the resin has dipped below the sensor level. So it's actively reading the, with those little prongs inside the vat to see if it's filled up or not, or if it needs to add more resin. And then, like I said, there's a control setting where you can either turn it on or off, or even increase the speed at which the resin is poured into the vat. And the other cool thing that we'll see is that I'm not seeing any layer lines or impacts of the auto filler trickling in resin, which is great because if you manually feed in resin, and more than likely you end up with a pretty distinct layer line. I should also mention that I sliced everything in Anycubic's Photon Workshop Slicer. The printer itself isn't available to be sliced just yet in Lychee or Cheetu Box. I'm assuming that will be coming in the very near future with one of their software updates. The same thing is more than likely gonna happen with the other new Resin 3 printers that were just recently released by Anycubic. Uh, but Photon Workshop, for the most part, has worked really well for me. This actually seems like a big performance improvement versus previous iterations of the software. It's sliced very quickly and it really had no issues handling most of the files. I will say I did still run into some artifact issues with my prints that we'll see here in just a second because I sliced them in Photon Workshop. I don't see these issues in Lychee or Cheetu Box. So as soon as those software versions are available and supporting this machine, I'll definitely be using those slicers. But in the meantime, if you have to use Photon Workshop, I would highly recommend doing all of your hollowing and supporting directly in Photon Workshop and not using pre-supported files like I did here today. The first print is from the Creature Armory and it's a Marvel Daredevil statue. This looks 
So cool. They just recently released this over on their Patreon and I knew I had to print this and run off and do one and it looks fantastic. I honestly wish I scaled this up further. I might end up reprinting this at a larger size here on the M3 Max. But for now, it looks pretty good. And again, you'll see here where it's got some of those random artifacts because I sliced it in Photon Workshop and this file was pre-supported. Typically, you don't see those things when printing in Lychee or Chitu Box. I'm not entirely sure what causes that, but it's uh, just something I wanted to call out here. But outside from that, all of the details look really crisp and clear on this print. The next one is from my buddy Fotis Mint, who has created a Moon Knight bust. And I figured this is probably an appropriate time to print some Moon Knight things since the show is gonna be releasing later this week. And one of the reasons why I chose this one is because it has some really fine details and you can really see those popping here on this particular bust. I'll try and get some close-ups here, but you can really see some of the fine details on the wraps where there's some of that extra detail that Photos Mint had worked into his design. But again, everything looks really sharp on this 3D print, which is very impressive to see. And finally, I had to print something big, a cosplay prop from none other than Nico Industries, and it's Moon Knight's prop from the show, his little dagger crest thing. I'm not quite sure how this all works. I haven't seen the show yet but it turned out really nice and clean on one side. But again, unfortunately, I ran into some of those strange artifacts, again, from Photon Workshop. The machine here runs flawlessly, and I think the prints look fantastic. The prints were super easy to remove off the build plate as well. I think I've got my settings dialed in pretty decently here on the machine, and I'm gonna be further playing around with it here over the upcoming weeks and printing some more crazy things. I also wanted to mention that this is not a review video. This video is being sponsored by the folks over at Anycubic, so thank you Anycubic for sponsoring this video and passing this machine along for me to show off here to everyone today. So if you're in the market for a large resin 3D printer that has an auto feeder built into it here, like the M3 Max, I would definitely recommend checking out what Anycubic has listed over on their website. I'll also have some links down below to some other sites where you can find this as well. Very excited to see more prints off of this. And again, not a full review. I'll be doing a follow-up here in the upcoming weeks once I get some more prints under my belt here off of this machine. And let me know down below what you think about the M3 Max because I'm so far pretty impressed with the results that I'm seeing off of this machine so far. Hey, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.